Hey everybody, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program RP0. We are uh, rejoining our currently uncrewed and unofficially named Mars Descent Vehicle uh, on the surface of Mars after making a successful landing test run. Uh, we've proven many times that this thing can in fact land on Mars and do so safely, although still no clue what happened to the wheels on the rover. That's going to be uh, an issue we're going to have to look into because... Well, if the crew can't drive to the new mobile base, then, well, <laughs> uh, they're they're not going to hoof it, that's for sure. <laughs> anyway, we are transferring fuel now from the descent stage, the basket, into the ascent stage, which, as I mentioned before, lacks an official name. We've got a couple of internal designations that I don't know if we're going to have go official or not at this point. But uh, I guess while you're here, if you have a suggestion for either part of this uh, descent, ascent vehicle, uh, either the ascent stage, which will be uh, reusable and sticking around for a while, or the lower portion, the basket, the descent stage that we'll be getting rid of after every descent, uh, please leave them in the comments for me below. And uh, well, we'll we'll probably pick from that list. So this is the official call for a name for our uh, Mars Descent vehicle, so I can stop just referring to it as the MDV. So uh, with almost all of the fuel transferred over, we're just going to go ahead and make some quick balance adjustments to make sure that we have uh, an equal fuel distribution across both sides of the spacecraft. We will uh, warp around until we are approaching, coming underneath the uh, Harmonia Station. There's the line there. And uh, now we'll go ahead and get ourselves uh, set up for decoupling and launch. So first, of course, fold in the solar panels, take a couple of deep breaths, and I will turn you over to old me for the ascent. Launch time, very nervous. Ready, set, uh, spooling. Come on, stage. There it is! Jesus! Why did that take 10,000 years? Yeah, I don't think that's going to survive. Why did SAS get turned off? Why can't I activate stability control? I am pressing the T key! Oh god. This is going very badly. Why do I not have SAS? Alright, mech job. Kill rotation. What the hell happened? Alright, let we gotta lean into this. Yeah. <laughs> We gotta lean into this a little bit more and get some altitude under our belt and some... We got the TWR, so we can just push for speed. Four kilometers per second under our belt. Hopefully that will be enough. Relative inclination still falling. Spacecraft wobbly. One dot seven six. We can start really pushing into this. And off it goes. Wow. Never had it be that difficult to rein in before, but you know, okay, five degrees. We'll just, we'll deal with it. We're going to get ourselves up to altitude, and it'll probably take a second ignition. Roll into this a little so we can have better control over things. Now we're starting to make a dent. Why does it hate me this much? God, I've never had such a huge problem keeping relative inclination under control. 
yeah, post it in general later, please do. Uh, if you want to get RP or RO mod pack, which version would be the best? I think 1.8 is the last official stable release. Um, I have seen rumors of it working 1.9. Shutting down. All right, we are, yep, that's where Mars turns into a fiery ball. 1,700 meters per second remaining, although we should have our emergency docking fuel here. Unlocked, ready to go, that's open, that's open. All the rest of them should be open. Do we not have, oh, are your avionics not turned on? No, they sure are, but I guess maybe without a pilot, we don't get stability control on this? That's really interesting. Yeah, I can't turn SAS on because we don't have it. And, oh my... Wow, we are off. Okay, we need to burn to correct this, like... Meow. Yes, it is ascending, <laughs> and we need to make a pretty desperate burn to make things happen here. So, ignition. We're going to bring that relative inclination as far down as we can. Point five eight. that's much more respectable. Yeah, still not technically crossing paths, but we'll go ahead and coast to our apoapsis and then uh, let's see what this node looks like to circularize at something close to what we would like after just a little tweaking with the node we would come to something like uh, 920 some odd meters per second to uh, put us in a nice stable orbit uh, in which we do have a uh, an intersect not a direct intercept, but we cross paths with Harmonia Station. That's 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 what I'm looking for. So uh, we will just uh, let SAS or MechJeb be off, and swing ourselves around in the node, kick it back on, and then uh, just get ourselves real close to the node because we have uh, all the TWR uh, to make for a real, real uncomfortable ride. All right, go for throttle up. Two, not quite there. Let's touch this up on RCS. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Kill rotation. One forty-one. Cool. RCS to disarm. We'll just let this uh, do its spinny boy thing as we uh, try to move fuel to more centralized tanks. Those are empty, those are empty, those are empty. Well, that was easy. How much we got left? 1,400 meters per second. Not bad. And so now the waiting game can begin as we just uh, kind of kill time, waiting for a uh, better place to intercept Harmonia Station. We'll try to uh, transfer fuel into a more centralized location, although I think our two side, our lateral tanks are empty. Um, we've even unlocked the uh, emergency docking fuel contained in the very bottom of those tanks, which will provide us with a, a nice little bump. Or no, I don't think we have. The Delta V readings don't, uh, don't show that. So we're actually not really well balanced yet, but not that it matters. Uh, a whole lot. I mean, it will, but especially as we try to RCS through this uh, intercept, uh, it's only a few brief meters per second, and we can watch that uh, separation at closest approach just fall very rapidly. And now also becomes the first time when it's really apparent how unbalanced our RCS thrusters are. Um, 
I neglected to give just the ascent stage on its own an RCS build aid thruster pass. And uh, to be very honest with you, these uh, big thrusters that were very necessary for keeping the nose angled where we wanted it during the descent phase of this mission or any mission are um, just way, way, way too much for when this mostly empty ascent stage is just trying to make very fine controls uh, to, you know, intercept <laughs> its mothership in orbit. So... That's going to make for some interesting logistical challenges and uh, certainly for a very interesting docking. Um, yeah, but we've dialed our separation down to just under a kilometer, which the controls were being a might bit touchy. So I figured that's about as close as we're going to get. We will dial that in more as we get closer to uh, our actual rendezvous. Um, I guess the good part of having uh, all this applicable torque through these thrusters is that we can make very broad sweeping changes very quickly, uh, especially when we are on approach. And Harmonia Station should be cresting the horizon. Well, it was a while ago. And that other white target is our old engine <laughs> from bringing this thing onto orbit that we missed with our charge of C4, what, two episodes ago? Something like that. So... Uh, we have a, about a 60 meter per second uh, difference to make. We will be doing that uh, on the back of the main engine. We're just going to use these thrusters to really dial in our separation now, uh, right before we hit this very long pause at render range, uh, bringing our station into our reality, and then start dial and approach. So we've already nearly cut it in half, coming down to about the 450 meter per second range, which is... Uh, generally, whereabouts I try to aim for. We've also uh, tanked off most of the delta V of our uh, intercept at this point. So now it's just a matter of uh, making this nice, long, slow approach as we wait for the station to get a whole lot closer. There's a quick bump on the engine, and yeah, should have uh, just kind of leaned into it a little at uh, a much lower throttle. Uh, I chose this engine because it is, in fact, throttleable, so that makes should make things uh, a whole lot easier. So now we're going to uh, try to run through our balance of the fuels again, although there really isn't a whole lot left here to balance. Still 1,200 meters per second available to us through that main engine should we uh, choose to use it. So I'm, I'm very glad that this thing has enough oomph behind it to make a fairly significant plane change maneuver if we needed to do an emergency uh, return to orbit or an emergency launch from a uh, Mars base that bounced on render in too hard and broke itself. Uh, we can still get the crew out of uh, most bad situations by just uh, springing them into orbit and hopefully into safety. And they've got the Delta V to make a, a quick rendezvous here with Harmonia Station. Uh, hopefully before I think they're... We have about two weeks of life support built into this spacecraft. So hopefully that will be uh, more than enough to get them back should the unfortunate happen. Although we're really all hoping it doesn't. And now the problem with uh, the unbalancing of the thrusters as well as Mech Jeb kind of rotating gloriously around... Uh, the rotation it's supposed to be killing. Instead, it kind of invites this wibble wobble, which I think is the opposite of killing rotation when you invite more rotation. Yeah, like any of this uh, swinging around, that's all um, mech jeb trying to compensate for stuff. But I guess it's having a real hard time of it because there really is no balance on these thrusters. I think I tried to maybe eyeball it a little bit, figuring it that was a phase of testing that I would leave for later. Because I I spent a lot of time testing the descent phase and the launch phase, but never once the rendezvous phase. And I guess in my excitement that got overlooked by quite a bit. But yeah, this this here is... Ooh, we're going to have to do something about the thruster placement on this thing, and I think we have two options. Um, 
edit with a Kerbal attachment system or rebuild the ascent stage and launch it out with the uh, next basket, uh, next window, which I'd really prefer not to do because it's, well, expensive. Anyway, here's me live for docking. Yeah, we're still off by a bit, but I feel like we could just go ahead and close in. You know what? Just go for broke. Get in there. You're light and small and kind of nimble, but definitely short bus, so... Hmm. Things I should have simulated for 10,000, Alex. Why am I so bad at this game? It shut gimbals off on a rocket. That throwing you off. Oh, the. Can I limit the throttle on these? Thrust limiter. I mean, effectively the same thing. That might work. I say maybe we'll get a uh, Kerbal in this thing later on and uh, try limiting some gimbal on everything that we don't need for descent. And uh, see if that doesn't help our case out a bit. I will say that we want the full gimbal range when we use it the most, which is on descent. But I mean, yeah, gimbal limiting is a, is a thing and has proven useful in the past. Hey, sunlight. Now that we're almost here and don't need it anymore. Oh god, back to have you're killing me. Stop the wiggles. Just just dock please. Just please dock. I'm so tired of this game. Just please dock. Which way do you need to correct? I need to take a look at this. Um, no, no. Ah, oh, Jesus. No, come on. Wrong, 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 wrong. Wrong key. Don't try to pitch the nose around. Let's just do it all through translational controls. <laughs> Every translational adjustment will come with a tap on the forward throttle because, oh my god. Yeah, why are... There's a couple of thrusters whose axis I don't quite understand. So, how much paint do we have to lose to make this a thing? <laughs> Stay over here, Mac Jeb. Bump, bump. Come on, just please. We're going to deorbit this station, nudging it. Yes! And finally, we have a successful docking. Uh, I'm very pleased with myself that we were able to get that done in less than an hour and a half. So just a, uh, a quick check of our available fuel resources here on station. I don't think we actually have enough uh, on hand to refuel this from a get-go. So uh, we may be bringing in that uh, fuel resupply pod soon anyway just to uh get this thing topped off and fueled for absolutely no reason though i feel like it would probably be a standard procedure to leave the ascent stage 
empty uh, while docking the new uh, basket module to it uh, to reduce chances of explosions. So maybe uh, maybe we'll just hold off and leave that thing in a parking orbit. So we will also uh, get any of our new science um, tossed into the laboratory so our crew can have some things to do over the course of the next uh, couple of years. They're going to be sitting here on station. So with that, we will bid farewell to our home Harmonia crew and then uh, return back to the KSC where we can start doing actual rocket integration with our Mars uh, drop base lab, the uh, Project M97. So uh, this is the core module. This is obviously the most important module to land successfully. And uh, it is not the heaviest module, but it is the most awkward is it does fill out the most space within our uh, patented aero shell. So uh, I did remove the rest of the life support supplies from the uh, inside of the core module. It will be completely dependent on the supply rovers. Uh, I'm not so sure that's the best idea uh, in retrospect, but uh, Moving along, testing has uh, determined that uh, aero capture is probably the best, safest, most uh, tonnage efficient way to uh, bring this into Mars orbit. Uh, we know we've got the Delta V in our B upper stage on the DN5 to get it to Mars and get it on course. Uh, we'll then aero capture. Uh, with, with this heat shield, which we've removed 90% of the ablator, or really as much as we can of the ablator to uh, save mass, uh, and then jettisoning the ablator and using its descent engine to provide corrections and uh, the deorbit maneuver to put it on course for our de predetermined landing site, which will be interesting to see by how much exactly we miss. Now, this is... <laughs> A absolutely ridiculous comparison of our B upper stage, which was considered huge and has pushed full crewed vessels all the way to Mars before, and this aero shell for this core module, and really every other module going up this wind or the next Mars window, uh, and the size comparison of it is just silly. There's no way this rocket is just not going to be well awkward. Um, we really don't have the money to invest in a new upper stage or really making a lot of changes to this launch vehicle at this stage, although uh, a, a new upper stage would probably help with our connection nodes, although I think the problems we are about to experience have more to do with the heat shield and the probe core than they do the heat shield and the fairing base. So that is also something I'm going to be looking into uh, uh, on my own time uh, in the next coming days, hopefully before this episode goes to YouTube. Maybe I'll have an answer by then, although I highly, highly doubt it. So uh, a lot of effort in um, redoing stages. I would really like to go back and edit the subassemblies for these things, maybe delete some of the old subassemblies that we don't really have much use for, and uh, replace them with modern, updated, fully fueled, properly staged subassemblies that would probably just work better, but that all sounds like effort and work. So, uh, way more time than was actually necessary was spent in uh, verifying that all of our staging for all of this was uh, within spec and we're still sitting at a 1.12 liftoff TWR is you know not great but uh, we will actually go up just slowly so we've also uh, upgraded the uh, HG3 engine on the B upper stage uh, to the B vacuum model, which gives us uh, 12 minutes of rated runtime, which actually puts us below threshold. The uh, original HD3A had a rated burn time of about 10 minutes. Uh, we had extra fuel in there to account for uh, liquid hydrogen boil off in transit to Mars. So this is the part where I make sure that there are is a lot of battery in the um, 
base core to facilitate communications since we can't really stick uh, solar panels on the outside of our aero shell anymore. It would just throw everything off. And then we'll stick a fairing on it and just lean into the weirdness. That's a little too much leaning in. Let's lean back just a little bit more. There we go. And we'll uh, we'll get this saved and then uh, run a launch simulation just to see how bad it could possibly be. SAS is on throttle set to full. Ignition sequence start. Let them spool. Let them spool. There it is. Clamps off. Let's get going. Very, very slowly. Oh god. Jaeger! Jaeger's gonna die. It simulated. Simulatedly gonna die. Uh, it, it, it might be worth our time to throw a couple of SRBs on the side of this. I think this is a cloud. Yeah, it's it's one of those angular partitions that commonly exists within clouds. <laughs> it, this is the, the low pressure and the high pressure front within the cloud. <laughs> cool, that's worse. I don't and KSE exists just within cloud whoa! Whoa, 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 buddy boy. Hello. Oh, this is interesting. How much of this are we going to tolerate? <laughs> I have to wait for the rocket to clip back through us so that I can reassign the control core. Well, this is going to be a short lived simulation. Very, very, very short-lived, uh, indeed. Oh my god. What are you doing, friend? Yep. Uh, rated for 150 tons. Spazzes out at, uh, 115. Cam, this is going to make me a little woozy, but if we can get to this inner core piece... No, we absolutely cannot. Why haven't you broken up and disintegrated yet? Because this is stupid. <laughs> All def 10 out of 10. <laughs> Seems rated for death. It doesn't it? Like, this is real dumb. Camera locked. There we go. This. Let's get in here and get this core changed around before it gets too stupid. Come on. Come on. Just give me the core. Oh, dude. I'm. Locked camera is useless. Are you really? What are you doing? One point one point three never change. Never ever ever change. Where are my gimbals at, yo? <laughs> well that's fine. Holy sh... This is... Yeah. Well... Good way to... Yeah. Proton avionics can't hurt you. <laughs> Somebody installed something upside down. Are we going up again? 
Thought we were just going very down. Did I imagine that? Okay, hold on a second. Revert. Launch. Alright, we're back. Whoa. Okay. Yep. And Jaeger's gonna die, and we are gonna find ourselves... Uh, this core. Control from here. Yeah, I don't know why. Let's <laughs> try to get rid of that because I remembered we're in desktop capture and not uh, streamy mode or whatever. All right, SAS is on. Throttle is set to full ignition. Landing guidance go away. Change in pitch. Lamps off. Physics warp. Not physics warp. Not physics warp. Same thing. Although we're getting less of it translated through our nav ball. Auto struts being useless as per usual, although that, that may have been a wiggle that was invited by using Physics Warp to uh, speed this along, so I'm already very much out of time. Little does he know he saw his 1.5 gigabytes. <laughs> Jiggly bytes. When did it start to lose it? Probably right around 100, 100 kilometers per 100 gigabytes. <laughs> Giggity bytes. <laughs> if you stop, I'll stop. Tap the key. Not translating through the nav ball very much, though. Mm. I retract my previous statement. Okay. Uh, we're gonna have to make some updates to the B upper stage. And probably make it wider, because this is real dumb. Uh, this is probably tolerable, and I think we could probably get this to orbit okay, but we have had this problem before, and if we're going to have this on, like, you know, five of our six Mars window launches next window, that's going to make things real, uh, real unbearable. So, we've obviously uh, got a fair bit of work ahead of us, uh, be it either altering the way the payload is integrated or altering the B upper stage to uh, give us a little more stability uh, on launch to really this is a quality of life improvement at this point because um, the buffeting can be within tolerance I guess or like within what I could possibly deal with but it's just not going to be fun and I don't want to spend you know a couple of weeks launching rockets that behave like this so that's my next personal goal. Anyway, that's going to do it for this episode, everyone. Thank you so much for hanging out. I really do appreciate it. And I will see all of you in the next one. So until then, see you later.